guys, what is going on and welcome back to What Shall We Do Next. I'm Mike, your host, and I hope you guys are having the best day ever. Guys, before I get started, please subscribe if you are new here and you haven't already done that. We're on the road to 151,000 subscribers and I would love you to join me on this journey. So hit subscribe right now and join the fam. But what is going on, you guys, and welcome back. And today, we are going to be doing another scary story. Woo! That's right, guys, and today's scary story is about bloody bill you thought i was gonna say mary this is bloody bill so the story of bloody bill is a scary legend about a confederate soldier named william anderson who was killed during the the american civil war they say that if you chant his name 10 times the ghost of bloody bill will return to exact his revenge Ooh, scary but enough of the jibber jabber, let's jump right over to the story. Bloody Bill. Years ago, in the 1860s, there was a man named William Anderson who lived in Missouri. He had a wife and two sons and was considered a good family man. Even though he didn't make much money, he always tried to buy his family whatever they wanted. When the Civil War broke out, Bill decided it was his duty to go and fight as a Confederate soldier. He kissed his wife and sons goodbye, and they cried bitterly as they watched him ride across the plains. When the Confederate Army were pushed out of Missouri, he became a guerrilla soldier, fighting on the side of the South against the Union soldiers. Before long, his skills at guerrilla warfare made him one of the most feared fighters in the South, frequently leading to raids behind enemy lines. However, Bill's life was soon to take a turn for the worse. His mother was killed by a freak lightning strike, and his brother was killed by Native American Indians. Despite all of this, Bill remained stoic, but he was unaware that even more tragedy was to strike his family. Union soldiers decided to put an end to Bill's raids into their territory. They arrested his father and his uncle and executed them. Then. They arrested his three sisters and imprisoned them in a three-story building in Kansas. One night, the building collapsed, killing everyone inside. Bill's sisters were crushed to death in the rubble. After learning about the horrible deaths of his sisters, they say that something snapped inside Bill Anderson. He was driven out of his mind by grief and became obsessed with exacting a violent revenge. Many people say that the loss of his entire family turned Bill into a sadistic and psychopathic killer. Bill went on a rampage, traveling all over Missouri and leaving a bloody trail of torture and death in his wake. He became notorious for the brutality and savagery of his tactics. He slaughtered huge numbers of Union soldiers and showed no mercy or remorse. He was often described as the bloodiest man in America's deadliest war. His exploits earned him the nickname, Bloody Bill. After killing a man, he would then proceed to shoot out their eyes, cut off their ears, and scalp them of their hair. They say that after every battle, Bill's face would become completely covered in blood, and he greatly enjoyed inflicting fear and suffering on his victims. However, as vicious as Bloody Bill's behavior was, he always made a point of sparing the lives of women and young girls. Union soldiers were determined to put an end to Bloody Bill's murder spree. They hired a scout to track him down and set him up for ambush. Bloody Bill and his band of raiders were taken by surprise and didn't stand a chance. One of the Union soldiers shot Bloody Bill in the side of the head, knocking him off his horse. As he lay dying in the dirt, they swarmed around him. Before Bill had a chance to scream for help, he was stabbed to death. 
The soldiers picked up Bloody Bill's body and slung it over the back of the horse. Then, they took him back to his home, where his wife and two sons were eagerly awaiting his return. When his family saw the soldiers approaching, they came out to meet them. There, in front of his own house, and in full view of his wife and kids, they cut off Bloody Bill's head. His wife and sons screamed in horror as the soldiers threw the head at them. As if it wasn't enough, the soldiers cut off Bill's finger and stole his wedding ring. After witnessing the brutal murder of her husband, Bloody Bill's wife went completely insane. They say that she was too broken hearted to go on living without her spouse. A few days later, in a deep depression, she hung her two sons from the rafters of the house and then killed herself. According to the legend, Bloody Bill's old house still stands today and his restless ghost still roams the countryside determined to exact his bloody revenge. As the story goes, if you say his name out loud ten times in the dark, Bloody Bill will appear at the foot of your bed. His face is rotting and covered in blood. His eyes are glowing red like the devil himself. He will wait there until you wake up and see him. Then, he will hunt you down and kill you in exactly the same way he was killed. A few years ago on Halloween night, four teenage boys decided to explore the remains of the old broken down house where Bloody Bill once lived. Holding flashlights, the four boys went through every room in the small house. Although they didn't find anything interesting, they decided to check out the basement before they left. Negotiating the rickety stairs, they found the basement was dank and dark and littered with cigarette butts, empty beer bottles, and other trash. One of the boys noticed that, while three of the walls in the basement were concrete, one wall was wooden. He used the butt of his flashlight to knock on the wood, and it sounded hollow. The boy started kicking the rotten wood and it soon gave way, revealing a hidden alcove behind it. The boys were excited and a little frightened as they crawled into the hidden room they had just discovered. Inside, there was a wooden bucket sitting in the corner. One boy shone his flashlight into the bucket and suddenly recoiled in horror. The bucket contained a severed finger and a severed human head. The boys were terrified and ran screaming from the house. The next morning, the police blocked off the house and began to investigate. After forensic tests, the body parts were discovered to be approximately two months old and belonged to a man who was around 25 years in age. The dead man was never identified and the investigation was later closed and considered unsolved. Nobody knows if the legend of Bloody Bill is true, but why take that chance? As you lie in bed tonight, try to resist the urge to test out this legend. You don't want your parents to wake up in the morning and find that you have become one more victim of the revenge of Bloody Bill. Holy shit, I did not see that coming. Well, I kind of did, because I've actually heard of William Anderson before. Um, but I didn't know this story. I don't know whether this is actually true or not. Um, it's pretty interesting, though, and it's very, very, like, disturbing if it is true. A lot of blood and stuff. I'm like, man, that must have been a terrifying time to be alive. Like, you people who are always crying about your lives now, and you think you got it hard now, imagine how they felt living in those times, guys. Jesus. Oh my god, it must have been terrifying, like, living in constant anxiety of, like, who's gonna, like, kill you and stuff. Like, it was crazy. Crazy times, man. We've been through some crazy times, I'll tell ya. But my question to all of you guys for question of the day is, do you believe this is a true story? And do you believe that if you say Bloody Bill ten times in the dark, that he will 
appear and potentially kill you and cut off your head and finger? Let me know in the comment section. That is question of the day. Magic 8 Ball! <gasps> is the legend of Bloody Bill real? Signs point to yes. <gasps> Maybe I'll try it for a video. <laughs> and guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you slap a like on it. Let's see if we can go for 5 billion likes on this video. I would really appreciate that. And also, guys, I want to say a very big thank you to my tier 3 patrons. Woo! -hoo! Yeah! So, Jay Aragon, Ashley Brook, Michael Serback, and Jessica Fiddler. Thank you guys so much for being a patron. Really means a lot to me. And I also want to give a very special shout out to my tier 4 patron, Angel Rodriguez! Woo! <laughs>Thank you so much, man. It really means a lot to me. Thank all of you guys who are supporting me while times are hard on YouTube. But thank you all so much for watching. I love you all. And remember the most important thing, chase your dreams. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.